Hello, and welcome to Steel Division 2. Today we've got a game between Firetite and Roguish here on Slut's Wesk. Now, remember versus balanced. I do gotta ask what the, the choice was here for these divisions, because when you think about Slut's Wesk, you think about 2k engagements, right? You've got wonderful open ground here, excellent playing places for tanks and the like. And uh, neither of these divisions are well known for their long range, 2,000 meter capabilities. I do have to say, I would slightly prefer a touch around this matchup. It just has quite a few um, extra tools, like it does get a card of pack 41s and such, but SU-76 is of course being much of a threat for that. And Division 3 here, really just to see Punza Buxen, but gonna run straight into a PTS here. And uh, that's one, that's so, second one doesn't load, but Punza Buxa being a Punza Buxa doesn't get a kill. <sighs> As it does take forever for that transport to go down. Punza Buxa just generally aren't worth it in my opinion. They don't have the penetration to do anything. <laughs> Another one going down there. Second one doesn't get into position, but versus 50 cal after X, not going to be able to do much. <laughs> but on the south here though, 2 three, one getting in. PGRS didn't manage to get any kills firing at the 2 three, one uh, but now a T-70 and a T-34 are going to be coming up for that. So we have to be a little bit careful here with the Pack 36 but um, while the Pack 36 can maybe get through the T-70, just with uh, the AP shells here, yep, it's got five extra penetration on the armor of that. 60, 60 armor there. Uh, but the T-34 doesn't really have to matter unless it gets in like 700, 750-ish meter range, and the heat shell just does have abysmal accuracy at that 750 meter range, so... Should be able to take this back, especially once the other car goes down. Stuka, though, coming in for the Maxim here. Is <laughs> it going to kill there? Lose it just to PTRS, but this OB doesn't really have anything to challenge it in the center for the time being. This is a 1500 meter range gun. Stuka coming in, countering the T34. Well, this Pack 36 doesn't get a kill on the T70, so an important kill there. Once it makes a bail to stop any of these Tessan Kogoi, but. Take it as a Niki here. Uh, looks like they weren't really intent on pushing too far, which is the right choice to move here. Fire Tight is on the balance income, so all he has to do is defend, and defend he will, but looks like the T-34 there either showed its side armor, or got taken out by... No, it must have showed its side armor. What on earth? There's no... AT down here. That is... Very weird that that would go down to that, at that kind of a range, but go down and did. Now, Panzer gonna do is get it into this echo over your range, as the other Panzer gonna do is do move forward. These Panzer gonna do is are relatively good at running and gunning like this, uh, which is why they're not stopping with what looks like a Q move. Uh, but yeah, you definitely don't want to get too close to take out his and of course, the decreased accuracy when moving. Doesn't help things down there either. Strutzy though, are gonna get pinned down by the MG and force back. And the Shug secures the location down here. So, fairly locked down for the time being. SC 76 is available to counter, but not really gonna have the power for that. And I'm surprised it's not firing. I wonder if these don't have indirect fire being in the SC 76s in the AT tab. T70 and T34 coming in for the center. There is just this pack 36 over here, which will be able to kill this auto car as the push here gets fairly well stunted. Half tracks and such doing a good job here. BTRSs versus Panzer 3s are getting a couple of penetrations as the Panzer 3s desperately attempt to shut down these half tracks. And actually, the Panzer Books stopped the surrender on the Canadia right there. Let's get the flamethrower though. And now, the Panzer 3s are likely going to finish off these tanks. But they're firing APCR. Kind of want to save that for uh, when you've got other things to shoot at. Yes, the Panzer Bixa actually does get a kill, finally. See how many shots I took, and now it's just reloading. Meanwhile, down south, another Panzer 3 recon coming in. The Stug could fairly well just push forward and kill the Sissy 76. 1500 meter range versus the uh, 70 to 50 of the Stug. We'll be able to take that engagement no problem. And the PA-64 here 
just out of range. I'm trying to see that exact same icon being used actually for the German armored cars, the SPW 2T2. So, but this one just says the DT. And a neat little car. Doesn't look like the model at all. <laughs> Thanks, Eugene. But now I expect that AT gun is going to be firing shots at that any moment now. Yep. Doesn't get the kill. P34 coming in, though. The Pencil 3s are relatively low on APCR, so you have to be a little bit careful if it's a T34. This one is, does have the 90 armor, and once Pencil 3 runs out of APCR, like, they can still side shot vehicles, of course, but they're really a lot less potent against medium armor, which is really where the strength comes from, is just that ability to shut down medium armor, really. And the 231 here, actually getting forcing this T70 to fall back, might actually get the kill here before the T34 can get involved. Pitiresque. And the M42 are getting the gum jam on the Panzer 3. And that will go down. SU57 as well, getting involved. Strike 3 coming up. We'll be able to counter that a bit more effectively. However, now, well, uh, many, many advantages of first Polish, which maybe the really the option to go for here is cheap IL-2s, and lots of them. M42 here, a uh, bit of a quirk of this map, right? If you order your troops to deploy somewhere around here, they'll take this road as technically faster instead of uh, going around this way. And it leads to a lot of units dying on this bridge. We also saw that Panzer 3 go down earlier. But one MG grenade does get on, the other one does get pinned down. It's going to be a long march back to the back line for him. Black Feely coming out for the... <laughs> just for AA, I suppose. And really, with only one card of Flight Feelings and one card of 88, the IL-2s and such might have like an easy time strafing this down, essentially. It does depend whether or not there's a Recon IL-2 in this deck, which I'm not even sure of. <laughs> Accidental unload of the Punzer Strike there, funny. But, yeah, IL-2 coming in for strafing runs. Deck 1 as well, but Flight Feeling, let's start the fire here. So, Mortar coming in. Potentially to counterfire that, but it's a little bit far away though. Even if you do get the mortar up here, it's probably much more likely to be used on this infantry here. Just trying to take this flag. But just a single tick here, moving into minute seven. As we see a commander coming out for the Thatcher player with the Stug 3 here. Stug 3 field. As long as this is kept alive, this commander will provide some excellent veteracy and also for the flag feeling. Flag feelings are deadly enough at zero vet. You can imagine what they'll do at two vet. <laughs> Interesting decision not to fault that IL-2 back. It, um... Uh, kind of would prefer to keep the bombs. Like, sure, you've got a lot of strafing power, but that IL-2 will be able to get through. Like, a Panzer three doesn't have the AT gun or anything. And, oop, now the SU-57. Oop, SU-57 is actually firing an infantry, so... Not too much of a danger there, but the Stig does take a penetration. T-34 backing up. Oop, oh, might get one more shot off, but nope. Oh, it does. Wow. Line of sight there. <laughs> and he says keep it just long enough to kill that T-34. So, excellent play there. That's who finally goes back. And now I see some of these uh, Aldo Carney, which are really the Polish's specialty here. One of the Polish's specialties with the disheartened Strafniki, right? <laughs> Funny to see them coming all the way over here. Obviously, one of them on this one, but went over this bridge, but... Uh, yeah, we'll make the way here. And one of the reasons why uh, Slutsk, you generally see it on, like, actual Slutsk, right? Which is more, um, this map here, <laughs> about. But these bridges are actually really easy to be shut down, right? You've got excellent line of sight over here to just fire uh, 750 meter range, like a back 40 or something, can shut off this road very nicely. And it's one of the reasons I'm not too fond of uh, this side of the map, despite having the advantage, technically speaking, with the bridge. Two star flag feeling. Doesn't manage to pin it down. Strike 3 does go down to the bombing run, though. So, very important kill there. The 250 kilogram bombs being enough to get the job done there. Depends the 3Ms. Up here, though. Uh, are getting shots on the Strelke. Second flag feeling up as well. There's no AA in the north, so really... 
I would expect the push almost to come to the north, but the problem with the north, of course, is to came to range, right? This still outranges almost everything that Bruce Polish has. Potentially, now that we're in phase B, we might be seeing some SU-85s, right, with their 750-meter APCR and such, that could fight Stugs, but all Roguish needs to do to counter that is bring in a Tiger, right? Tetra does get two-star Tigers, and also gets the two-kilometer AT gun, but only two of them, and in A, so... Bit of a difference there. Another thing we are seeing is there's no... Um... Where are the Volkssturm? Right. Mortars firing away. But... Not really using a lot of Tetras known for a very cheap infantry. Right, 50 point Landis shoots them, which we are seeing quite a few of. As they go here, down to the meat grinder, I suppose. <laughs> Strelke, the PTRS, actually getting multiple kills there, but... Which actually stops them from, uh... Being killed outright by the M40 and the SC76 is here as a PTRS. Doesn't quite have the damage to kill the truck and all its inhabitants. I think the threshold is four, which APCR also doesn't get, but regular shots definitely do. And the APCR on the SC76 will completely kill a transport. Having said that, these are only 25 points. IL2 coming in. I wonder what it's just going for. Instead, it's just going to take phase two flag feelings now. As the JU87 comes in. There's uh, no EA for the Polish player side, except for this unit. Obi is just firing at the MG34 that's desperately trying to make its way in here as the maximum of course is to unload. Uh, but yeah, Stuka coming in. Excellent shot on the SU76 here. Not quite enough to kill it though, but definitely does enough to probably one shot it from one of these pins of threes, even firing a Sierra or Voyager. A87, finally moving back. And now we see hey, 105s uh, There doesn't seem to be any radio down here. But the radio for the SD Kifsa 261 as well should provide... Well, enough to cover this town almost. And of course there's the 189 also providing radio re coverage here now. With the OEA coming out, the Yak-1 is going to make a run for it. As the 189. Normally you see it in bombing runs in the beginning. Ooh, Yak-1 mine does overshoot it, so the Fucker Wolf is going to be able to get away, and the fact that they're going to force that off. Very important there. Okay, 105s still not unloading. Might, might be able to provide their own radio here, and these are just absolutely deadly guns. You only see these in a couple of divisions. These, uh... Ooh, these might be Czech. Yeah, Czech with the designation for T, but Czechish. <laughs> These have eight rounds per minute rate of fire. That's without veterancy, right? That's one of the highest rate of fires of any howitzers in the game, which makes them was comparable to, well, maybe not quite to mortars, right? <laughs> but the rounds come down almost as quickly as mortar fire, and the aim, the aiming time is what makes up the disparity there. So you see, like one and just the caliber, right? Of these things are so much more that, bam, and of course we, they do have radio range here. These will be able to kill those this and we no problem. A single salvo for one gun would be enough to kill it, uh, but two guns maybe a little bit overkill. Can't complain though. The single movie does manage to get out of the way just in time. And yeah, if microed well, these tech howitzers here will be able to fire excellently on these units sitting in the town. SS Sturmgrenadier are also coming in now, together with the Landesführer. And together with the London Fuel, having three stars doing good ideas, certainly a force to be reckoned with, right? Because you can't avoid most of the medium or most of the close screen cover here with Sturmschutz and then move them around the houses so they're not in direct range of fire of Desenko movie. That does open them up a little bit to the odds of Carney, but they do have three stars and uh, ooh, two MG 42s of their own, so still very deadly against those odds of Carney. Fact feeling. Is gonna force off the IL-2 here. Now it's just firing again. Well, I might actually get the superior here on the first shot. <laughs> Still no movement in the north. Quite surprising. As we just see units flooding in down south. And if Rogish doesn't get, like, a 59 here, we may see Firetight uh, be able to turn this around. He does have the superior income. But there's still, of course, five minutes left on Phase B. 
That's a lot of money. And then uh, five minutes of advantage, income-wise, just over balance in general. So, around ten minutes in total. We you see a pack 40 finally coming into this position here. I would hope. Yep. It's going to be able to not only shut down this road, but also deal with the T-34, no, no problem. Yep. <laughs> they want to advise. Do take out the leader there. Probably going to make it just a little bit easier for the SS Pioneers and the MG-26 Pioneers to put together a push. Multiple T-70s coming in. As the goes down to the T-34E, so I'm going to have to find another answer to that, but Stuck 3 coming out. Really surprised we're not seeing much in the north, but Slugfest down south is just as entertaining. Ugh. Pack 36 here for T-34E. Very definitely has the armor, but just the nuisance will allow something like the Panzer III to get on target long enough to get the spalling hit on the T-34E and kill it. Again, three-star here with Landesführer together with the commander. Pack 40 is going to get on target here. Might fire APCR, which would definitely not be the move. Yeah, it's going to be firing APCR, but we'll likely still get the kill. Just might take a little bit unnecessary damage there, as we'll take three shots rather than uh, two to kill. And to four health now, as it was sitting out in the open. And out of PPCR. Not that first bullet is anything you need APCR for. They may have just made this gun more deadly. I can't rid of all the APCR, really. And now, still going to be covering at the center road here. Ooh, that is a tough, tough line of sight sometimes. Oh, there's smoke here. <laughs> Brought down by who? These howitzers, no doubt. And now, a CQC push is going to be made. I would be really scared of almost doing a CQC push through a bunch of 1st Polish infantry, right? Desenko Gobi, Sapirzi, you need to see quite often with them. Still no AA out here. We're relying instead of these Yak-1s, which get forced quite often back by these, uh, like 20 mils. Oh, I'm an idiot. There's the AA right now. Ugh. And now with all the smoke here. Sturm Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers, yeah, bringing in Panzer Grenadiers to a uh, fight like that. Not really sure if that's a move, but the Pack 40 is getting very important kills here. And the IG-18, for whatever reason. The one let's go down. The SS Sturm Grenadier gets out mostly unharmed, though. But there's a lot of suppression on these units, especially with that IG-18. Stug 3, needs to move forward just a little bit more. These units are going to get very heavily suppressed from these Maxims before they can make a move here. IL-2 is also going to get a good hit on these Sturm Grenadiers that were coming in. To do a lot of damage, and the other carney gonna rush forward for that. Back feeling, iron <laughs> on the aisle too. Multiple maxims now coming in, but there's a lot of units on these two positions, and once again, it'd be very, very easy for Rogish to take the center ground if he had just brought some of these 2K implements. <clears throat> Maxim gonna go down now. Sharky's gonna go down. Panzer gonna do this. Push forward. Panzer 38T is ready to do so as well. Pack 40 might actually have to help out to kill that. <laughs> but he's going to get quite a bit of fire onto it. And now with the 38T's pushing forward, there is very little AA to stop this push here. These are Panzer going to MG26s. And so, Q moving into the enemy, well, still advised just due to the prevalence of CQC in, in the enemy's deck, there's actually no CQC infantry down here. So, besides, like, the Unsel Carney, which are decent enough, just not for their price, at this kind of a fight, um, and the plane gets forced back, wow. Just the nick of time, too. Flock feeling might consider moving forward a little bit. And these MG-26 Grenadiers, I just gotta push through all this, they do have the superior CQC firepower at this moment, which is funny to see. Especially if these Spursy coming down the wrong road again, run straight into the Pack 40. But it doesn't look like there's any recon, actually, for these, uh... Right there. Stroke 3 firing at the AA. Not what you want to see. This AA goes down. That'll be the last of the AA in the center position. And... All of a sudden, once you take out the enemy's AA, these fucking wolves can just run wild. Maxims do manage to pin down the Pack 40 before the Spursy get in, but there's a, just a line of dead vehicles here. And now that the Spursy in, going to be having to uh, push a lot more units through just to kill those. But HS-111, 
I was gonna bomb off, and uh, this might actually just be brutal if he keeps these men flying through. Uh, that was a very dangerous bomb. Come on, keep pushing. No, keep pushing. You can do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, they're so suppressed that if even if they, the all these units unload and just keep moving forward, they should remain suppressed uh, long enough for these units to kill them. Right. Multiple T-34s coming in, but at this kind of a range, the Stug does have a little bit of an advantage. Uh, the 90 armor there really being a boon. The 135 penetration, of course, being quite capable of killing these C-34s, but it is two versus one, and they do still have a relatively good penetration chance. Yeah, 1,500 meters. Yeah. All these units suppressed. Once the Percy isn't suppressed, as they're going to do is people forward. They're going to see if it fails to get close enough. But TNT from this unit was actually thrown to the other one. Same thing here. And now the Panzergonia is going to be happy taking that engagement, just as long as that Sir Percy doesn't reload. <laughs> Stug does go down, finally getting forced back there by those dual T T-34s, but one of the T-34s are going down now. It is 14 to 10. Really surprising. This could very easily be a 59 if we're supposed to push somewhere else. Maybe a case of tunnel vision over here. But thanks for any engagements now. SQ-76, this one's finally an artillery version. He's providing some fire support, but putting down more of his own troops from the looks of it. And these 38Ts, they're not slouches either when it comes to killing T-70s, so... <laughs> we'll eventually take it out. And yeah, just have to be a bit careful of the T-34 here, but there's so many troops coming in here. And if you're on Maverick Income, right, <laughs> Land of Shits and Oss are the perfect kind of tool to just Q move forward. IL-2 does manage to drop, but only a couple of its shots, it's like feeling, still doing its job. And we'll be forced to switch targets now as the second IL-2 comes in, or more of that infantry. And actually, the Land of the Lost, moving back over here, kind of be trying to make some kind of an assault after all those, uh, the leader and the other units got surrendered. Right there. Mortars firing though, in anticipation, but there are two two ones here, and a very much distinct lack of AT. The PTRD is going to be the only ones here, but if there's if they're moving around in packs like this, uh, that's going to be very very hard to contend with for just PTRDs. So let's see what Connie coming in as a response. Not really sure that's the move to pull here. All right, uh, Rogish has managed to take this flag. And it's likely going to be China for this flag. E34 did suicide rushing at two pens at threes here. Uh, 14 minutes left on the clock, so he's got three minutes until the C phase income really hits the fan, and then he's going to need to find a way to really push this in. But going to need to bring a tank or something in here to deal with these 231s, but there's another pack 40 hiding behind here as well. Off class coming in. Very little AT here. All right, could just. Uh, Basically, move these all around just as long as he stays. Well, as long as the 222s kill the PTRSs before they can effectively get enough shots on target. And now Stuck is coming in just to really drive this push down. And <laughs> MG 2600, you don't see them often that they're fighting in that medium range or that, that uh, short range. Uh, but MG 26s are no slouch, they're just not as good as dedicated CQC infantry, right? So if we compare the Elzo Carney, which has 0.9 plus 1.3, the MG 26 Grenadier, which has about one, that's about two damage compared to the Elzo Carney's just over, just over two. Uh, which, considering the, the point difference, right, 20, 25 points to 30, and these are disheartened as well, <laughs> actually makes the MG, MG Grenadiers very potent in that kind of an engagement. Of course, not so much versus... Yes, I go gobies and stuff, and we see tanks here once again getting shot down on this road. SU-57, very much a weak tank. It's 15 to nine now, so that's only given fire tight five minutes here to make some kind of a push, and a lot of tanks coming in. This is the move, but Panzerschecks as well. See Wakani with MG-42s firing off, but just versus the auto cars and this many troops here, <laughs> not going to be too successful. And yeah, despite the fact that Tetra has a massive advantage at the 2K engagement, nothing really happened in the north. 
for the time being. Funny, funny. Thought this should must get enforced back again. This T-34 really has some, like, come over here. Or, would have had to. And really, there should have been some kind of an AT here to prevent these auto cars from even getting that, that far. But, uh, ever since the AT on this bridge went down, even if it wasn't misplay, this bridge actually became a lot safer, minus this PQRS here. <laughs> Which might have been just out of range of this bridge, looking at the line of sight of things. Black 41 as well. IL 2s not being able to strafe down their compatriots. <laughs> yeah. Well, looks like Roguish is going to take the win for this one. It is in such a state where I think it'd be very, very hard to come back at this kind of a point. There are a lot of T-34s coming in, but this is the last charge of the Light Brigade, unless he can find some units somewhere else, right? Because it's usually in a balance versus a Maverick game, what you really want to be doing, if you are the balance player, is, um, right, you want to, you want your first counterattack to be where your opponent hasn't invested his Maverick income back into, right? Because if you look down here, this is, like, a lot of units. You're not getting through them, this, most of this, and you're not getting through it in a timely manner, which is really what matters here. Um, without, like, off-map, basically, right? Which is why off-map can be such a death blow to some players uh, in reducing the amount of forces that you're able to build up, which is why a lot of people tend to hate it. Um, however, as I was saying, you don't want to be pushing through this. You want to be pushing through somewhere soft and spongy, right? Like, if you invested 155 points into here, this is basically 155 points by itself. You're probably not going to get through it as first pull as with the Stug sitting in the way. But, um, two SU-85s on the first income take, taking out the Stug, and then a bunch of infantry, and you've gotten one, maybe two flags back for yourself. The SU-85s come and sit over here, and the Rogish would be forced to bring in something to counter that, right? Potentially even moving in on this flag, there's, there's no recon here. This Fomvalfa could be very easy to take out. Um, <laughs> again, not really Division 4 fighting in that kind of an area, so it's understandable why there was nothing done, but... It's just been a complete slugfest in this area the entire time. Hail 2 goes down to multiple flag feelings. And of course the two-star flag 41. These things do have uh, like acceptable levels of accuracy here. 8% at two-star, I think. I'm not sure if that's the base accuracy or the two-star bit accuracy. But um, a direct shot with an 88 is liable to kill, or if it's already been damaged. So you could have just things getting shot straight out of the eye. Sky here. And now with both T-34s going down in these pack 40s, just the T-70s are left here. There is a Panzer Strike here. Ready to take those on. And the T-32s are no slouch themselves. Artite has managed to get back at the flag. And these T-70s are going to take out this 271. But lots more infantry is going to have to come in. And yeah, without anything to kill these 222s or these Panzer 3s, he's desperately looking for a flag, but potentially in the wrong area. Right? Gotta have a cool, calm head and make a slow push into the opponent, but not slow enough that uh, <laughs> they gotta lose, right? HS-111. Hey, I finally replaced here, but the HS-111 with those big bombs is gonna get on target there. Kill the T-70, and once again, the infantry is free to move forward. More infantry coming in to reinforce this flag, but it's back to a 59 for now. This infantry being forced to fall back, and yeah, just a Q move from all these stocky LKMs. Like, they do have a lot of firepower, but you're going to need something to kill these tanks here, right? Strong LKMs. They don't have anything to deal with Panzer 38Ts. They don't have anything to deal with Panzer 3Ms, let alone the Stugger, the 88 that's been sitting here in this wreck and having replacing the Pack 40 that went down earlier. Ah. Now, up there coming in as well. More auto cars. Just really going to drive that hole. This tank needs to do something, but as long as this tank is sitting here, right, on this side, really needs to be more over here where the pack 40s can't get it where you can exert influence over this flag where you look for somewhere else to equalize potentially even over here has managed to do it <laughs> but 2 2 is now i would expect them to clean this up no problem there's no at or anything to to follow up this push so back to a 1410 temporarily but the writing is on the wall t34 is desperately coming in but now the 38t is just crushed forward might even get a couple of surrenders though the stokio cam are shooting it in the ass <laughs> Supposedly having TNT in it as well. Do do do's. Yep. Pack 4, he's getting snipes on transports there. 
Yeah. Interesting game, though. Interesting game, though, I do have to say. As the rest of these Strelki finally go down. They do have each house, so... See the 2 2 just being able to push right into there, but... Not much is really going to stop them, and now... Some infantry coming back to take that flag back. It will be 59 for a while longer, especially if these 2 2s get involved and prevent these infantry from doing anything. Well, I'll play to both players here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. My god. Yeah. Brighton's on the wall now. Might play it to the last minute, but yeah, we see here. Probably send the GG's now. And uh, <laughs> Slitzisk, 9 to 24. <laughs> 1,450 kills to 3,210. Roguish definitely up trading the Polish player there, or the first Polish player, but. Really, taking first pulls to that map. You yeah, gotta be wondering what the what the bans process was looking like in that circumstance, because they must have been banning like two K divisions left and right to get to that kind of thing. Where first Polish seems like a worthy choice. But anyway, we'll see you for the next one, and goodbye.